Welcome to the Word Podcast. The Lord God has given us His Word. Let us learn it. Let us live it. Let us rejoice in it. Spread the Word. Blessings, everybody. This is Dale. Thank you so much for joining with me today on the Word Podcast. We continue our examination of the Word. We've been looking at Elijah here for several episodes. I thought we might do this three or four episodes. I'm not even sure how many it's been so far now. <clears throat> but the Scripture shows us a great deal about him. Uh, and where we began, remember, was with uh, what James has said. James said that Elijah was a man like us. And when he prayed, it didn't rain. And when he prayed again, it did rain. And so there was so much to be understood that a man like us, and what, what's the man like us? It's a righteous man, someone who believes, who believes the Word of God, who believes the Spirit, who does what the Spirit leads him to do. And so we've seen the various things that Elijah has done. Now we're in the uh, uh, New Testament, and we're looking at places where Elijah is referenced, and it gives us insight into what the Old Testament was talking about. So I want to go back to Matthew 17, where we were in the most recent episode, and this is often called the Transfiguration. This is where Jesus is transfigured before three of his disciples. Elijah is mentioned because he's there. He appears with Jesus. Elijah and Moses does. So I'm going to read these verses, and then I want to uh, read the I mean four or five verses that come after that that give us some really in, interesting insight. And the Lord answers questions that we often have about this. Okay, so here we go. Matthew chapter 17 verse one says this: Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John his brother and led them up on a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his garments became as white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three tabernacles here, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. So uh, we see here, this is just me now, we see that Peter knew who they were. Okay, the disciples knew that this was Moses. The disciples knew that this was Elijah. They knew the import of them. That's the reason Peter would say, hey, let's make a tabernacle for each one of you. Well, Peter was wrong in that sense, but he would learn that shortly. Okay, Verse 5, while he was still speaking, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud said, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down to the ground and were terrified. Well, why were they terrified? Why did they fall to the face of the ground? Well, because this was the audible voice of God, the Father himself speaking. And when the Father speaks in this way with this audible voice, the reaction normally everywhere I can see is that you are terrified and you fall on the ground face first. Was this an involuntary falling? Was it voluntary? Uh Yes. <laughs> okay, yes. Uh, sometimes the Lord will involuntarily follow us to the ground. Okay, don't you love that English? Verse 7, And Jesus came to them and touched them and said, Get up and do not be afraid. So here it's more than likely they were falling on the ground in worship and just uh, terror, because it says terrified, of being afraid of the sound because Jesus comes over and he touches them. Perhaps he was reviving them. I don't know. But he touches them and says, Get up and do not be afraid. Now verse 8, and lifting up their eyes, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus commanded them, saying, Tell the vision to no one until the Son of Man has risen from the dead. So he doesn't want them to say anything to anybody until after he goes through everything he's described, he's killed, he's resurrected from the dead. Verse 10, And the disciples asked him, So it must be these disciples with him. Okay, because it's the flow of it. Why then do the scribes say that Elijah must f come first? They had just seen Elijah, and they're a little confused because the scribes, the teacher of the law, had said that Elijah must come first before the Messiah would come. But here, they know that Jesus is Messiah. Okay, they know that Jesus says that he's going to die and he's going to be raised from the dead and that he's coming again. But then they're saying, the scribes, that Elijah must come first. So you can understand the confusion here. Verse 11, And Jesus answered and said, Elijah is coming and will restore all things. But I say to you 
that Elijah already came, and they did not recognize him, but did to him whatever they wished. So also the Son of Man is going to suffer at their hands. And they're thinking, what is this all about, that Elijah's already come? Well, he had said some things earlier about Elijah in relationship to John the Baptist. And John the Baptist had already died. John the Baptist had had his head taken off, okay? And so now Jesus is saying, Elijah already came, but they did not recognize him, but did to him whatever they wished. So also the Son of Man is going to suffer at their hands. Well, that's narrowing it down. Who was it that had done this to John the Baptist? But then this last verse really helps us. Verse 13, Matthew 17. Then the disciples understood that he had spoken to them about John the Baptist. Whoa, whoa. What's being said here? Jesus is saying that Elijah is going to come, okay? Because he said, verse 11, point blank, Elijah is coming and will restore all things. Remember how it had been prophesied that Elijah would come and restore the hearts of the children of their fathers and the hearts of the fathers to their children? That we saw that out of uh, the Old Testament, the Old Covenant. And Jesus is confirming that. But then Jesus says, but Elijah has already come. So Elijah has come, but he is coming. And this is very much what you encounter with uh, prophetic literature, what you encounter with what the Lord's doing. If you believe that Jesus Christ is Messiah, If you are saved, if you were born again now, today, and back then at this time, if you believe that Jesus is Messiah, then John the Baptist was Elijah for you. Okay, John the Baptist came and restored the heart. He was preaching repentance, right? And he did that. Yes, it was obviously a spiritual role and function. He was functioning as the final prophetic voice, as that Elijah voice of repentance. And John the Baptist functioned that way. If you did not believe, then he did not do that. Elijah himself is going to come before the great and terrible day of the Lord. That's what the prophets tell us, that Elijah is coming. And so you can see why they were uh, confused about this, because there's a dual role and dual function. John the Baptist was, quote, Elijah, unquote, for you if you believed, if you repented, and if you called upon the name of the Lord and you believe that Jesus is Messiah, John the Baptist is your Elijah. But for those who are remaining upon the earth when the Lord returns, there's going to be an Elijah that will come. That's one of the reasons that I think perhaps that he's one of the two witnesses that you see in is it Revelation 11, I think is where it is, uh, that he's one of those two witnesses uh, because he's going to come and he's going to speak forth the truth, and then he's going to die. Remember, Elijah never died. He was caught up. He caught up and taken away. It's also the reason I think that Enoch may be the other one, because likewise, he was with God and he was not. He just went on. He didn't die. And we know the Scripture says that it's appointed for man once to die. And so, you know, both of them will die then, perhaps. That's sort of where my mind is going right now. Uh, anyway, we see that Jesus is the one that helps gives us understanding about this, of who Elijah is. Got a couple more Scriptures I want to look at related to Elijah. We'll continue on next time, okay? Again, I'm Dale. Thank you so much for your time. I'll see you then.